Okay, so this afternoon we're going to talk about scalars and vectors. Uh, scalars and vectors is just another way of categorizing or grouping the various physical quantities which we use in physics. Okay. With this classification of scalars and vectors, we group these physical quantities into those physical quantities which only have what size and also those physical quantities which have what size and direction so there are physical quantities which only have size for example mass mass has got size but the mass of a particular object does not have direction So we can say uh, this particular object has a mass of 5 kg, but mass does not come with direction. On the other hand, there are physical quantities like force. You apply a certain size of force. So basically force definitely does have direction, but you apply the force in a particular direction or you pull or push in a particular direction so there is in the case of force direction is actually very important so there are several physical quantities which behave like this they have some of them only have got mass uh sorry size others have got mass uh got size and direction so we are going to group the physical quantities we have looked at so far both uh SI based quantities and also derived quantities in this grouping of uh, those without or those with only size and those with size and direction. A physical quantity which only has got size, that is what we call a scalar. So scalars are only are those physical quantities which only have got size or magnitude. Those physical quantities which have got both size and direction, those are what we call vectors in physics. So those physical quantities which have got both size and direction, those are what we call vectors. Okay, so basically that's what you're going to talk about. Most of what you're going to do is putting these physical quantities we looked at into either we classify it as a scalar or a vector. Okay, so scalars only have got magnitude or size. Vectors have got magnitude and direction. The other thing which you're going to do is, as you're going to see which physical quantities are actually scalars and the like, you're going to notice that it's actually very easy to add or subtract scalars. So when it comes to scalars, for example, adding masses or subtracting masses, you've got a mass of 5 kg, you want to add 4 kg to that, then you end up with 9 kg. That's very straightforward addition. Or if you've got a mass of 10 kg, then you want to subtract maybe a three kgs from the 10 kgs. So you end up with seven kgs. So that is straightforward. So addition or subtraction of scalars is a very straightforward process. So we are not going to spend much of our time discussing how to add or how to subtract scalars. Okay, because we know how to do this. We have been doing this for a very long time. Another example of a scalar is time. If you've got a time of, let's say, 15 seconds, then you add 10 seconds, you end up with 25 seconds. Or if you want to subtract from there, again, you can do subtraction. So what I'm trying to say is adding scalars, these physical quantities which only have size, is just straightforward arithmetic. So you just add or you subtract things. Uh, Tybon 
That microphone needs to be switched off. Cynthia, microphone needs to go off. Cynthia, also, if you're not speaking, we need your microphones off. Otherwise, if you disrupt the class with your microphone, then we'll have to throw you out. Okay. Cynthia, we need that microphone off. So, our focus really, yes, we are going to use the scalars, that's okay, and we already know how to do the addition and subtraction, but our focus really is going to be on these things called vectors, okay? Because a vector introduces something which we do not normally deal with in real life. We deal with direction intuitively, okay? But when it comes to actually considering the direction in which things are happening, you have to sit down and try to do a calculation, but you can do it in the head intuitively, okay? So the other thing we're going to do when it comes to vectors, we are going to see how to break down a vector into what are known as components. These components basically are a measure of how much a vector is in a particular direction. So the directions we are interested in when it comes to us doing this stuff is the directions of the xy plane so we are interested in the x direction we are interested in the y direction and as you not as you might be aware from your mathematics which you did in high school the xy planes the x axis and the y axis they are at 90 degrees to each other and that's where this perpendicular comes from what the directions we're interested in are those ones we are, which are at 90 degrees to each other and we make things very very simple for ourselves we pick the xy plane so we want to find out how much a particular vector is along the x-axis how much a particular vector is along the y-axis the reason why we're doing that is because naturally these vectors these physical quantities called vectors can point in any direction they are not restricted to pointing only along the x-axis or pointing along the y-axis no they can point in any direction when vectors are pointing in all sorts of directions it becomes difficult to add or subtract those vectors so what we need to do is actually we need to find out how much this particular vector is along a specific direction specifically along the x-axis and along the y-axis so basically that's one of the things we're going to do so we are going to learn how to break down a vector into what are called components then after that we're going to use these components which we have come up with we're going to use them to carry out addition and subtraction of vectors so basically this is the method you're going to use so uh, some outcomes so by the time we're done hopefully over the next two lectures by by Thursday so we should be done with this topic so we have some objectives the first objective is that as a student of this course you should be able to define what a scalar quantity is again I'll say it a scalar quantity is a physical quantity that only has size or magnitude and you are also supposed to be able to give examples of what these scalar quantities are i've already given two examples i've given the mass of an object which is mass mass has got size but there's not a direction i've also given the time when you're adding 15 seconds you add 15 seconds plus 10 seconds just get 25 seconds there is no direction whether the time is moving in the east or in the west that bit is not there okay so that's what a scalar quantity is so you should be able to define what a scalar quantity is and give examples of scalar quantities next you should be able to define what a vector quantity is and i've said we have said before say a vector quantity is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction and you should also be able to give examples of vectors. I mentioned one example of a vector, which is force. How much you push 
or you pull something, there's a size to that, and force is measured in newtons. However, that's not the whole story because you also have to apply this force in a particular direction. So force, apart from having the size, it also has direction. So that's another example. We're going to see more examples of these. Then the other thing which we hope you'll be able to do. Uh, sir, yes. Sorry. Yes. Oh. What's the question? What is the question? Okay, we are going to push forward then. Yeah. So another thing which we are going to do is you are expected to know how to break down a vector into what are called its components. These components are considered to be scalars kind of scalars because we already know the direction in which these scalars are po these components are pointing when you're talking about the scalar we are basically saying how much is this particular physical quantity in this direction so the direction is already chosen okay you have already chosen the direction in which this particular physical quantity is a point point so you're asking the question what is the size of this particular physical quantity which points in this direction so in such in that way we consider components to be kind of scalars okay when in fact there are how much of a vector is pointing in a particular direction okay so once we do that once we have components then these components because they are pointing in a specific direction we can add them the way we add scalars okay then the last but not the least is the addition and subtraction of vectors and the kind of vectors we are interested in are what are called coplanar vectors these are vectors which lie in the same plane okay the vectors which lie in the same plane what we mean by same plane is you could consider probably uh, a war clock so the, the the arms of the war clock are in the same plane okay so basically or in the same page or something like that so plane so vectors which lie in the same plane so you add them and basically that's what we want to do so again so we move on to scalars and vectors so all the physical quantities i've looked at whether they are base quantities or derived quantities we can group them into scalars and vectors and as we have said scalars have only size or magnitude okay vectors on the other hand have got size and magnitude so when it comes to vectors it kind of presents we need a way to present vectors and there are different ways of doing that when you're taking a mathematics course okay and you talk about vectors what a vector is probably in the second part of the year when you talk about you're going to represent a vector like this the, for example if a is a vector quantity i can show that a is a vector quantity by putting an arrow on top so a with an arrow on top or i can type it like this i can type a bold faced a so that shows that a is a vector in mathematics and also in physics in the physics textbook okay. you can also present or represent these vectors in terms of a picture for example as you can see here in figure number one there's point a and also point b so we are interested in this distance between a and b this length or distance between a and b we are interested in the size of the separation between a and b since it's a length it's going to be measured in meters but we are also interested in the direction in which we are moving so we are moving from a to b so the arrow at the end there shows the direction in which we're moving so in form of pictures when you're trying to present a vector you're going to draw a line with an arrow at the end that arrow shows the direction in which that particular 
vector is pointing. Then on top of this line, somewhere here, you're going to put the symbol of that physical quantity being represented and also the size. So this is enough information to take care of the fact that a vector has got size and a vector has got direction. So up here on top of this line, we're going to say, okay, fine, this is a force or it's a distance. We say F is equals to 20 newtons. So we put the size there. F is equal to 20 newtons. That's the size of the force. Then the direction in which the force is being applied. So we take care of the fact that a vector has got size and has got direction. These arrows do not necessarily have to be drawn to scale. As long as you have shown us that this is what the physical quantity is, this is the size and also the direction, then that's it. that is enough information to denote a vector. Are we clear? On how we are going to present vectors going forward. Any questions? On what we have talked about so far? Okay, if there are no questions, then I'll move on. Scalars. So like I was saying, when it comes to scalars, adding scalars and subtracting scalars is just simple mathematics. Okay, it's just simple mathematics. For example, is there a question? Okay. Uh, sir, I'm not very clear. Why are you not clear? I'm saying, sir, the question presentation of whatever you are saying. I'm sorry, but you can't just say I'm not very clear on whatever you're saying. There has to be something you're not clear on. Which part are you not clear on? How you are drawing the diagram, sir. This one. Is this a diagram which is confusing? This is a picture way of representing a vector. This line joining two points is the length or it can be force, it can be anything, okay? But that line represents the size of the vector. Are we clear? The line be connecting these two points, this line, this blue line, the blue line represents the size of this vector. The arrow at the top here shows the direction in which this vector is pointing. That's what you need. A vector needs to have size, a vector needs to have direction. How are you going to show the size? You can draw the size of this line to scale. Let's say you can draw it to scale, or you might just draw a line, then you put the size of the line on top here. You can say 10 meters from here to here. You say 10 meters here. So we know from this point to that point, the distance or the dis displacement is 10 meters. So you can put the size on top of this line or if you draw it to scale then you can tell us whatever scale you're using and what this thing is supposed to be okay the arrow shows the direction because when you're talking about vectors magnitude or the size of this particular physical quantity and the direction are very important they can't be ignored are we clear Is it clear? I'll move on to scalars. 
scalars do not have direction. The fact that scalars do not have direction makes adding them and subtracting them very easy. For example, here, I have got 5 kgs plus 3 kgs. What do I get as the answer to the addition of 5 kgs plus 3 kgs? 5 kg is a mass. 3 kg is a mass. It has got no direction. So how do I add scalars? I just add the magnitudes, the sizes. The size is 5 and 3. So I add the 5 and the 3, I get an 8. Then the unit is the same. 8 kg. Here I've got 25 seconds minus 13 seconds, I get 12 seconds. Here I've got 25 meters plus 50 meters, I get 75 meters. Here I've got 1.5 moles plus 0 0.7 moles, I get 2.2 moles. When you're adding scalars, what you're just doing is simple addition, subtraction. You don't worry about the size. This gives us an idea. Okay? As much as we're not, we're not going to do a lot of scalar things, but we are actually going to use scalars when we are trying to add or subtract vectors because that's why we find <clears throat> these components. Okay, so adding scalars and subtracting scalars is as straightforward as I've shown there and we will not concentrate too much on this. We are only going to look at the scalars when we are dealing with components. I think there is someone who needs to be admitted. So most of our time is going to be spent on adding vectors, vector addition specifically. That's what we are going to be interested in. In this course, in this physics course, you have to add vectors, you have to subtract vectors. Okay? So most of the course deals with adding these vectors. Now when you're adding vectors this time around, whether you're adding or subtracting vectors, the direction plays a very important role. Yes? What do you want? I don't have a stapler. I have a stapler, but I have a class. Go find, go to the, what's this? The head of department. Okay. So, when you're talking about vectors, Adding vectors and subtracting vectors. Direction is very important. You cannot ignore the direction. You have to take care of the direction. And that being the case, if we are going to be talking about direction, then we need to choose which direction is going to be our x-axis, which direction is going to be our y-axis. And that's where the x-y plane comes into play. The other thing in terms of terminology which we are going to introduce as a result of this addition of vectors is what you get when you add or subtract vectors. The sum of adding vectors or subtracting them, adding vectors or subtracting them is what is called a resultant. So we have got a new weight, what we call the result of the addition or subtraction of vectors. When you add vectors or you subtract them, what do you call the result of this addition? It's called the resultant. This resultant is going to be important. And that's one of the things you need to be finding out. The tasks in the course, finding the resultant. Okay. We're going to ask you, we give you vector A, we give you vector B, vector A has got this size, it has got this direction, vector B has got this size, with this direction, Add, find vector A plus B. Find A plus B. That A plus B is the resultant. Okay. So one, when you're adding or subtracting vectors, direction is important. Two, the sum of adding vectors or subtracting them, that's what's called the resultant. Three, the topic here talks about vector addition. We do not consider vector subtraction as a different thing because vector subtraction as you are going to see is just a special form of vector addition okay vector subtraction is a special form of vector addition so we do not separately study vector addition 
when you're subtracting vectors, basically what you're doing is you're actually adding vectors. You're adding one vector plus a negative vector. Now, a negative vector in physics has got a specific meaning. It means that this particular component or this particular physical quantity vector is pointing in a direction which is opposite to the other vector you're adding it to. Okay. So we will not specifically talk about vector subtraction because it's a special case of vector addition. So there are two types of additions you're going to do. There are two types of additions you're going to do. One is called adding vectors acting in the same line. We're going to see what this is and I'm going to explain what this is. The other one is called adding vectors acting in different directions or different lines of actions. Now, the only thing which is important about vectors, two things, the size of the vector and the direction. Okay. How do we know that a vector, two vectors are with the same direction? We can know that two vectors are with the same direction if those two vectors are pointing in the same direction or those two vectors are parallel to each other. Okay? If you have got vectors which are parallel to each other or they are pointing in the same direction, then we say that those vectors are acting along the same line. You can actually put them on the same line because you can shift a vector. You can move a vector around. You can put them in the same line as long as you do not change the size of the vector and you do not change the direction. The moment you change the direction, then it is no longer the same vector as before. Okay, so there are two types of what dishes are going to do. Addition which involves vectors acting along the same line. These are vectors which are parallel to each other or vectors which point in the same direction. The result of adding here, the result of adding two vectors acting along the same line is the sum of the magnitudes of the two vectors. So this is what we're being taught here. If you have what two vectors, these vectors are parallel or they point in the same direction. The resultant, which is the sum of the addition of these two vectors, is the same, it's the same as just adding their sizes. Like the way we're doing here, you add 5 kg plus 3 kg equals to 8 kg. You can do the same thing with vectors, but only if they are pointing in the same direction or if they are parallel to each other. You can do this. 5 kg plus 3 kg. We could say 5 newtons plus 3 newtons equals to 8 newtons. This would only be possible if the forces we are talking about are parallel to each other or are acting in the same direction. Are we clear? Do we have any questions on this? Questions? So, this takes care of the size of the vector because remember a vector has got two things. It has got magnitude and direction. So if the vectors are acting the same line, meaning that they're pointing the same direction or they're parallel to each other, you just add them. When you add the magnitudes of the two vectors, you get the size of the resultant. You get the magnitude of the resultant. So you get the size. That's one part of the puzzle. The next bit is the direction. In which direction is the resultant? So this here says the direction of the resultant remains unchanged. So, if your vectors are acting along the same line, 
the, 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 the size of the, of the resultant is just the sum of the magnitudes of the two vectors. The direction of the resultant remains unchanged. That's a good thing because if we notice, oh, these two vectors are pointing in the same direction, we just add them like we have been adding here. Five newtons plus uh, three newtons because eight newtons here, a displacement of 25 meters plus 50 meters gives us 75 meters displacement. As and the direction is the same. So we just carry out simple addition like that, which is very good. If one of the two vectors acting along the same line, so in this case, if one of the two vectors, which is parallel, is acting in the opposite direction, then its magnitude is given a negative sign. So if one of the vectors, okay, which are parallel, these vectors are parallel, but one of the vectors, this arrow, is pointing in the opposite direction, then such a vector, its magnitude is given a negative size. So you end up having a quantity like minus, a, a physical quantity whose size is negative. So when it comes to vectors, it is possible for you to have a physical quantity with a negative sign. That negative sign shows you that this particular physical quantity is pointing in a direction which is opposite to some direction which you have chosen to be the positive direction. When you have your xy plane, there is part of the xy plane along the x direction which is positive, so that bit is called, you call that the positive x. There is part of the x, the x axis which is negative, so that bit you call it the negative direction. There is part of the xy plane, the y bit, which is positive, you call that the plus y direction. There is part of the xy plane which is negative, you call that the negative y direction. Okay, so depending on how you have chosen your directions, if you have chosen it, let's say I choose going east to be a positive direction. If I'm walking east, any meter I cover east, any distance I cover east, I choose this to be my positive direction. Okay, if I start going west, then that's going to be the negative direction because I have chosen a particular direction to be positive then now I'm doing something else which is opposite that so I'm going to be moving in the negative direction are we clear? so when it comes to vectors you have the opportunity or the chance to choose which bit or which direction is going to be positive and which direction is going to be negative Yeah, the internet is misbehaving. Let's wait a bit. Okay. Do we have any questions? questions
okay that's according to Vernon that we make progress so here we have got an exam examples of quantities which are scalars and those which are vectors examples of scalars mass length time electric current temperature amount of substance light intensity area volume density speed energy work power frequency charge voltage resistance all these physical quantities have got sizes but they do not have direction examples of vectors we have got displacement displacement is distance in a specific direction so you cover some distance but you tell us the direction in which this particular distance is being covered velocity that is speed in a specific direction so there is how much the speed is but also in what direction then there is acceleration that is how fast this velocity is changing in a specific direction then you have got force so you apply your force in a particular direction there is pressure pressure always points in the direction of the force there is momentum momentum as we know from our previous class is mass times velocity mass is a scalar you're multiplying the mass times the velocity which is the vector so whenever you multiply a scalar times a vector you get a vector the same thing that's how you get your force as a vector because force is mass times acceleration mass is a scalar you're multiplying the mass times acceleration which is a vector so you multiply a scalar times a vector you get a vector in the force same with pressure pressure is a is a vector because for you to get pressure you divide force divided by area force is a vector you're dividing by area which is a scalar so if you divide a vector by a scalar you get a vector momentum same thing momentum is uh, a vector the reason is because you're multiplying a mass which is a scalar times a velocity which is a vector so if you multiply a scalar times a vector you get a vector then torque torque is related to force but torque measures the turning effect of a force sometimes when you apply a force for example uh if your tires are flat then you're trying to remove the tire from a car you use a a wheel span so as you are applying you're turning that wheel span you're applying a force and that force turns the nuts so how much turning you cause that's what is called torque you turn the spanner in a specific direction or if you are tying the nuts you tie them in a particular direction so the turning is in a specific direction that's what you call torque that's why torque is a vector because it's either you're turning something clockwise or you're turning something anti-clockwise electric field and magnetic field these are types of forces electric field and magnetic field well the, i think the most common one which you, you might be familiar with is a magnetic field a magnetic field is found on a magnet a magnetic field is an area a space or a region around a magnet where a magnet exerts its force of attraction so if things are being attracted by a magnet the attraction is in a particular direction okay also if they're being pushed by a magnet the pushing is in a particular direction so a magnet attracts things in a particular direction and that's why magnetic field is a vector let's move on to adding vectors try to see how or what vectors which are pointing in different directions look like the other case which is of interest to us which is what you're likely to find in your exam is when you're adding vectors pointing in different directions and usually okay you can use different types of methods to do that one of the methods you can use is something called a triangle of vectors but this method of triangle of vectors which we're going to talk about in the next 10 minutes is not very practical and we do not use it in this course okay we use a different method to add or subtract vectors but because it involves some pictures you can see what we mean when we are saying we are adding vectors or we are subtracting vectors okay and let's see what that looks like so as you are going to see uh 
I'll talk about this later. So these are basically vectors pointing in the same, acting along the same line. So these ones are opposite. So if you choose this part to be positive, so this force is going to be plus 10 newtons. If this is chosen to be positive, then this is going to be negative. When you're dealing with vectors, you need to choose which direction is going to be positive and which direction is going to be negative. So if one of these directions is positive and the other one is negative, when you add this positive force plus a negative force, you end up with a zero force, a force of zero. You are adding a negative force plus a positive force, to, so the resultant is zero. Here, you've got these 10 newtons and these 10 newtons, they are acting in the same line, as in they are parallel to each other. So if you add them, 10 newtons plus 10 newtons, you end up with 20 newtons. Here, you've got a 10 newton force, in this direction, you've got an 8 newton force in this direction. They are not the same size because the 10 newton force is greater than the 8 newton force. So if we choose the direction of the 10 newton force to be positive, it means that the other direction of the 8 newton force becomes negative. And if that's the case, we have a plus 10 newton force plus minus 8 newton force. We end up with a resultant force of 2 newtons. So here we have the resultant force of 2 newtons. Here, the resultant force is 20 newtons, and there, the resultant force is zero newtons. Th it's very simple. You don't have, it's not complicated here because these vectors are acting in the same line. A vector which acts in the opposite direction, you give it a negative from the direction you have chosen. So, yes, we're going to use some of these, but not until we look at something called components. So, how do you add vectors acting in different directions so here in this diagram as you can see we have got two vectors vector a and vector b which point in completely two different directions and these vectors we can move them around the screen as long as the size of the vector and the direction of the vector has not changed okay as long as the size of the vector hasn't changed and the direction hasn't changed then we are talking about the same vector. So in the first case, here, A. So you have got this line, which starts from here. Then there's a direction telling you the direction in which this physical quantity is acting in. So this is vector A. It can be any physical quantity which satisfies the definition of a vector. So this is A, then vector B. Vector B starts from there. All the way up to there so you can see between a and b vector a is smaller than b b has a larger size than a so if you move from a up to there then you move along b what you have done is this is what we refer to as vector addition so you move vector a then vector b you end up there this is the same as moving along this red line this red line with its two arrows this is what is referred to as the resultant. Are we clear? The blue lines with one arrow, that, those are the vectors A and B. The red line, this is the result of adding vector A and B. So this is what, what you get when you carry out this operation A plus B. When you move along A, then move along B. You end up with this A plus B. If you were very good at angles and also you have graph paper and stuff, you can do this kind of stuff. But we do not do that because most of you probably are not very good at this stuff. So we have a different method we use which works for everybody. Next, if I come to this diagram here, now you notice one thing. The vectors A and B, their size and the direction in which they are pointing in, these do not change. However, we can shift them to different positions along around this page on the screen. We can shift the vectors. This vector A, I've moved it to here. This vector B, I've moved it to this end. So I have got vector A, this one. Then vector B joins vector A at the back here, like this. The direction is the same. The size of B is the same. A, the direction is the same. The size of A is the same. So if I move, starting from this point, 
then I move in this direction. As you can see, if I'm moving in this direction, I'm moving in a direction which is opposite A. So what I end up having, I am moving in a direction opposite vector A. So what I end up having is not vector A, but something called minus A. I have a vector minus A, so I move along this direction opposite A. So I end up with minus A, then I move along B, I end up with B. So what I have is minus A plus B. Minus A plus B is the same as B minus A. So if I do this, minus A, then I go along that line, minus B. This is the same as moving from this point. I move like that up to that end. So this is what you refer to as B minus A. Again, the red line, this red line is the resultant. That, and the two arrows show you that you're talking about the resultant. The two arrows tell you the resultant. Okay. If, on the other hand, I decide to move from the top, from this A end of B, then I move this way. So as you can see, I am moving in a direction which is opposite B. Okay. Opposite vector B. So what are the direction is... The size of the vector which I have is minus B. So I move along minus B, then I move along A. So what I end up with is I have minus B plus A. Minus B plus A is the same as A minus B. So this is the same as me moving from there straight down to here. And the direction, as you can see, is different now because I'm moving down this way minus B and A. And that's the direction there. You will notice a couple of things. If you are paying very uh, close attention to this thing, you will notice that the direction of B minus A and A minus B, they are opposite. The other thing you notice is most likely, which is very true, B minus A, the size of B minus A and A minus B are the same. B minus A, the size, the size of B minus A, the magnitude of B minus A, and A minus B is the same. However, these two vectors, B minus A and A minus B, are pointing in different directions. Because the direction is the same, is different, even if the size is the same, these two vectors are not the same. Because when we are talking about a vector, we take into account how much is the size of this vector and in what direction is this vector pointing. Are we clear? So you cannot ignore the direction of vectors. You have to take into account what is the direction in which this particular vector is pointing and what is the size. Are we clear? Any questions? We're going to stop here. Next time we meet on, on Thursday, we're going to talk about components of a vector, what a component is, and how we use these components to actually carry out vector addition and subtraction. Do we have any questions? especially on this this is not how we are going to expect you to work out the result there's a different way we're going to do that questions no questions sir it's clear is it clear on what we are talking about uh, okay so clear. it's very clear then that's good that's a good result it means that People are following and understanding. So we're going to build on this information on Thursday when we meet. When we talk about what a component of a vector is and how we use these components to add and subtract vectors. So that will be on Thursday, 8 hours. So see you on Thursday. Uh, the recording for those who came in late, uh, we have been recording this thing. So again, we're going to upload the video recording to YouTube. Then the link will be shared on Moodle so that you can watch. So if you came in late, please 
do not despair. We'll make the recording available very, very shortly. Okay, so I'll come, we'll come to the end. I'll stop sharing. So unless people have got other questions which they need to bring to my attention, we have come to the end of our class.